Biologically intensive gardening and farming is revolutionary. It's more than that, it's evolutionary. According to one uh, master's thesis at the University of California, Berkeley Soil Science Department, it can build the soil up to 60 times more rapidly in nature. Other forms of agriculture are depleting the soil 18 to 80 times faster than in nature. Depleting, not building. Do you want to be on the winning side? I do. So we need to grow all of our own organic matter inputs in the, on the soil we cultivate. This doesn't mean you can bring in stuff from the forest or the trees next to you. And we recycle all the nutrients contained in the crops we grow as much as possible back into the soil. The approach of grow biointensive can result in full sustainability. We just need to make additional steps to make the normal organic farming fully sustainable. Only 1% of the farmable land in the world is farmed organically. And I don't know the exact amount, I haven't had time to research it, but very possibly there's only about 3% of the nutrients in organic fertilizer form uh, needed to farm the world organically. So we better find out a way not to have to use chemicals, herbicides, tractors, GMOs, and instead closed loop biologically intensive farming. It's essential. We began in Stanford University Industrial Park with the permission of Stanford University, Palo Alto, and the Syntex Corporation. And more rapidly now, it's beginning to go viral in Latin America and in parts of Africa. We're feeding the world one garden at a time. How do we do this? Through deep soil structure creation, uh, composts, building and use, close plant spacing for improved plant environment and water conservation, companion planting for crop enhancement and pest minimization. We grow 60%, this is a recipe of our area in compost calorie crops. So this is like your winter grains and your summer grains because they produce a, a significant, a tremendous amount of calories and a significant amount of carbon. 30% of the growing area is in special high-calorie root crops. Did you know that potatoes produce 19 times the calories that soybeans do? Soybeans are not the food of the future. The, most people in the world are only going to have 4,000 square feet to grow all of their own food. And in order to grow all of your calories with soybeans takes you um, somewhere between 12,000 and 16,000 square feet. We also use easily available seeds, open pollinated seeds, and it's a whole system. It doesn't work. If you don't prepare the soil deeply, you're not going to be able to get four times the plants in a given area and have them produce very much. What kind of world do you want to create, the part at the top or the part at the bottom? It's really each of our choices. Politicians, corporations, agribusiness are not going to do this for us. Agribusiness is the entity that is depleting the soil so rapidly. So in your backyard, you can be the answer to climate change. Wow. And good exercise and fun and food. It's possible to grow complete diets in 4,000 square feet and possibly as little as 1,000 square feet in as little as 4% of the area. The U.S. diet currently takes 101,000 square feet. That's two acres. To do this, we need to choose our crops carefully. And so here you can see the index for calories. With potatoes, 35,800 calories per month. And with uh, wheat, it's only 1,865, one unit versus 16 units. We really need this knowledge of plant personalities. When we have interns, I have them taking notes in, in a three ring binder and they have a separate page for each crop. You need to know what kind of water they need. Did you know that if you're growing the tapioca plant, uh, it produces 0 0.028 calories per gallon of water. Sorghum produces about 18 calories per gallon of water. So this is the kind of thing that you're going to want to know. Also, grow biointensive can interplant legumes in a way so that you're producing your nitrogen at the same time as you're producing the food. And this can cut the area in half that you need to sustainably grow your complete diet and your complete compost uh, farm. Now look at this, here's the 101 units of land. When I began this work in 1972, it took 30,000 square feet to grow the average U.S. diet. Now it takes 101,000 units. 
When I began this work in 1972, it took two tablespoons of vegetable oil each day, two tablespoons full of sugar each day. It now takes six tablespoons full of vegetable oil every day and 13.28 uh, level tablespoons full of sugar. I mentioned that most people are only going to have, uh, have this 4,000 square feet of land, but if you add two level tablespoons full of vegetable oil to it from sunflower seeds, it double, more than doubles your area. Then if you put two tablespoons full of sugar per day on, it increases it by another 2,000 square feet. And if you eat just one can, 12 ounce, of organic soda pop, it contains another uh, five units of land. So it's, it means you have to get rid of three quarters of the world's people. Do you see that? And if everybody ate the 101,000 square foot diet rather than a 1,000 square foot diet that we see here, uh, it takes 100 times the land and you have to get rid of 99% of the world's people if everyone was eating a big diet like we eat. It's, it has a lot of vegetables in it and seed crops and grain crops, but it has animal crops as well.